Hi, I'm Val. Uh, you may have seen my workshop or be familiar with some of the wallpapers I make on Wallpaper Engine. I just wanted to make a quick little video going over the shake tool and how I think you should properly use it or some advanced or intermediate mechanics on how you use it. Uh, a lot of people, when they make a wallpaper, will just come into the wallpaper and add some movement like that with a shake a very general like you know boom we have moving wallpaper and that works it's not very fluid it's not very blended part of the image doesn't move properly you know there are problems with it it's the basic 30 second how do I animate an image <clears throat> so I want to go over different things you can do with this tool uh, the first thing is the tool itself, so opacity, hardness, size, and value. This is, you can ignore this number, 255, that's just the numeric value. Essentially it's 100% and 0%, and anything in between is just a gradient in between. I usually use 100% and then change the strength. You can use different values, it doesn't matter. That's, that's perfectly valid. Size is just the size of the tool, obviously. Opacity and hardness I'm actually going to show in Photoshop because it works under the same principle. So hardness, I'll do opacity first. So opacity is a, a fraction of a value. So that's 20%. You have to brush many times to get the full value. If you go up to 100%, it's just full value right away. So that's opacity. It's transparency. It's see-through. Hardness is the fuzzy edge. If I go up to 100% hardness, it's a hard edge. So with a low opacity and a soft brush, it lets you blend things together. So there's no hard edges, there's no broken areas, you just... it makes things slightly smoother. And I think it's almost always better to use a very low opacity, probably around 20-ish percent, and a very, very low, if not zero, hardness. <clears throat> I don't think there's anything you can do with a hard brush that you can't do with a soft brush, but there might be something. So those are the settings I would recommend. So what I would do for animating is start off by putting a full body movement over the character. The whole thing. All in the same direction. Hopefully this image is pretty big, so hopefully it'll work. Uh, and then take away, so go to zero value, take away from the background. Now you're never ever going to get the background to not move. The only way to do that is to cut your character out of the background. You're always going to have this edge of movement. If you go too far in, your character will stop moving. If you go too far out, your background will stop moving. There's no way around that. The only way around that is to, well, the only way around that is to cut your character out of the background. You can blend it and blur it and make it not super noticeable, but essentially, yeah, you're always going to have some bit of animation that you don't necessarily want, unless you take the time to remove your character from the background. <coughs> so I'll just quickly go over this. I want her hand to move. Okay, so that's probably about as good as it's going to get. I don't care about the interior here because you won't be able to tell. So now we have an up and down movement. So that's how you add the whole movement. This is your movement. This is your jiggle. So now we want to make it... Actually, before I do that, I'm going to make it so it's faster. And I shouldn't have to change the strength. Maybe I will. Just a tad lower. So flow phase offsets the time that this happens. So you start, you you work backwards. This is what was at 100%. Now we're taking away little bits at a time. So we'll start at like 248. Again, soft brush. And now we're just offsetting parts that we want offset head, her chest, her butt, her hair a little bit, her arm a little bit, and we're going to take away a little more and make the brush smaller, 
So this is a slightly bigger, well, it's not a bigger movement. The movement is the same amount, but it's going to be offset by more. So now you can see it's moving at a different time. So we want her arm to move at a different time, and her hand, and her butt, and her leg. So already it's looking different. The top of her back, and her head. Actually, I don't... Uh, yeah, I do. I like it. Okay. <clears throat> so now, we do even more. And this is where, I guess you could say, the jiggle comes from in a jiggle animation. So it's not a shake animation anymore. The shake is just up and down. But now it's going to be a jiggle animation. So we're just going over the parts that should move slightly more than all the parts are red. And then we'll do one more. This is just kind of by eye. There's no real right or wrong, it's just experimenting. There, okay. So this is about as far as I would go with this animation. And this is where I used to stop. But the next thing I wanted to go over in this video was animation stacking. So this list of effects, I'm gonna rename this so I keep track of it. This list of effects works by going downwards. Everything on top will get incorporated to everything below. And so to show that, I'm going to make a shake effect. I'm going to crank up the opacity and the hardness and just put a line right here. So you can see this broken line of where this effect is. You can see that because it's below. If I move it above, you're still going to see it, but it's going to go up and down with it. So now this effect is being moved by this effect. If I bring it back down, it stays still, and it they, they, they break each other. They don't work well. So the smaller the animation, or the less things the animation affects, the higher up in the list it goes. So I'm going to make this her hands, and I'm going to remove that animation and start again. And before I do that, oops, I will remember to pause this one with the visibility toggle. Now we're going to go into our hands and just add some kind of hand movement. I don't know what I'm going to do with this. Put this back down to the right settings. We'll say, let's say she's moving her hands like this, just for the sake of doing it. Maybe she's doing some of this. Just a happy little accident. Now we can... Um, so to make it line up speed-wise, you have to decide on how fast you want your character to move. So the main animation is moving at a speed of 4. So that means I can make this... Actually, I'll turn this back on. So now it's it's already working properly. Her hands are moving up and down, and um, left and right. But the timing can change. So at a one, it's kind of it's offset because it's an odd number and an even number. If I do two, then she's going to do two cycles of up and down for every one cycle of in and out. If I go to four, now they're matched. So every time she goes up and down, actually it's kind of offset because it's the wrong direction. If I go to minus four. There. Now it's the same, but it's at the opposite. Instead of going left-right, it's going right-left. Actually, I'm going to tone this down a little bit. So now she's kind of grabbing herself, right? And you can also do this again, double it again. Now, I don't want her to be doing that, because that's weird. So I'm just going to keep it at the same speed as the other animation. Um... And you can give it a flow phase. The flow phase, again, just adds jiggle. So I'm going to blend it. By blending it, I mean going down one small step from full, and then start working down from there.
that just makes it more of a soft animation. So now, what if we want a third animation? Well, we can add it, because we just stack the layers in the correct order. So I'm going to add an animation for her fingers. <coughs> I want her fingers to go up. We just go wherever we want the animation to go, draw it on, I'm actually going to lift everything up, oops, I don't want that to move, make the brush a little bigger, and then all of the parts above the animation I want her to be lifting, so now we do that, so now we need to time it correctly again, so I'm going to turn these layers back on. Now, it's going to be broken right now, because they're in the wrong order. See how it's kind of waving in a weird way? So if I move this all the way to the top, because the fingers are the smallest part, now most of the waving goes away, because the layers are aligned properly. So the fingers go on top, because they're the smallest. After the fingers, the hands, because they're bigger than the fingers. And then the whole body. So now we can set it so maybe it's, it's every half no half doesn't work what if we do it four well sometimes offsetting the time works um to do it every half step or twice every step maybe twice will even work here i don't know i wish it was less than that and that looks a little weird remove some of this, so it's just her fingers. Okay, so what you can also do is use noise. Noise makes it random. Instead of going up, down, up, down, up, down, noise makes it so sometimes she'll go up, sometimes she'll go down, and then sometimes it'll be a random when it happens. So it's not quite as fluid. It's not quite as... It just breaks up it breaks up the fluidity of it. It makes it more random. You don't have to do noise. In fact, I don't actually want it. I just wanted to demonstrate what it does. So this is without noise. It's up, down, up, down, up. With noise. Up, up, down, up, down, up. It's kind of random. I don't like noise for this particular. So we'll take it away. My mouse stopped working. Okay. So now we can add another animation. I'm going to do her chest. So this still has to be above the full body movement, but it doesn't actually interact with the bottom, so they're not touching, so it doesn't matter. Or they're not overlapping. It's just its own separate animation. So now I'm going to add a rotation. Uh, I gotta stop this from moving. Well, actually, the actual animation itself is going to be done in here because that's how you do it. It's all on the main body shake. Why isn't that... Whatever, it's working well enough. So I can pause this animation. You can use these. So this is expanding. Why isn't it showing? There, see? So expand, contract. This one is rotation, it spins, and this one is movement. So I don't want to use any of those. Put this back down to 1. Actually, we'll probably put it down to like 0.7. So we're going to do rotation. Low opacity. We want to use a brush size that's slightly smaller than her. And then all right there. And then make this. That's a little too far, but whatever. Now we're gonna take away and blend out the background stuff that we don't want moving. And now make it time the same. And 
this part here should be moving as well. No, that looks bad. So all I'm doing here is making it so that because she's going up and down, she's also going to be going forward a little bit. Oh, except the time is off. Minus four. And crank down that. Actually, what happens if I go two? That didn't add a whole lot. Sometimes it adds more, but it's basically so it's it's an out movement instead of an up and down movement. Man, her fingers are moving way too fast. Um, what else? So you can add another layer. We'll make it a left and right movement. So this is just to break up. Not break up, but instead of having her go straight up and down, always, she can go... Actually, I was going to make her whole body move side to side, but you could just make her butt move side to side. That works too. Eh. Now we'll make it the whole body. Fuck it. that much since that was just for testing. Okay, and we'll take away from the background because we don't want the background to move, if at all possible. It's going to move, there's no way around it, but as little movement as possible. I took away her forehead. Oops. Okay, and now again, as always, we can flow phase to offset the time of this animation. Make the brush a bit bigger. Start by blending. And then take away more. This will make her arms. And her butt. And one more. All right, so this is basically where I would end up with one of my animations. Now if I toggle all of these off, and I go back and add the simple shake animation that somebody might do. This is the difference. This is an animation you'd see on the workshop. Oh, we have movement. And this is an animation you can end up with once you learn how the tools work, once you learn how to blend things together, once you learn how to flow phase properly, once you learn how to stack animations. There's other stuff you can do. You can add movement to her hair, you can add movement to her robes, you can add movement to her face, you can add blinking, stuff like that. But this is just a kind of an intermediate guide how to use the shake tool to add layered stacking animations. Um, I hope, it, hope it's helpful kind of a weird thing to make a video on, but who knows? Thanks.